Did you know that nearly 30 billion disposable diapers are used every single year in the United States? That means there are a lot of parents just like yourselves trying desperately to potty train their children. We're going to look at two cutting edge methods to see if there are answers to your prayers. The first method was created by a Chicago nurse named Wendy Sweeney and is also known, or she is also known as the Potty Whisperer. Yay, JT! Going to the bathroom in their pants is not acceptable. Do not go pee or poo in your pants or you'll have to clean it up and I will not give you treats for that. I am the creator of Booty Camp. Booty Camp is a five-hour training session where I teach the kids to take responsibility for their bodies. Pick it up. I start the children out at two and a half because the kids' bodies will be ready. The class itself really isn't just potty training, it's a parental class also. I'm going to teach you how to handle them when they go home, okay? So these guys have to start doing everything independently now, okay? So I don't want you guys dressing them. A couple of the controversial points of this method is the food that I implement. We have candy, chips, juice, cookies, chocolates. Here you go, sweetheart. Thank you so much for listening. The other thing is that I make them clean up after themselves. Some people think that is so mean. Oh, there's pee all over. You need to clean it up. We're not going to tolerate that. After the child has gone pee or poo in the potty, it is their responsibility then to bring it to the big potty and empty it in there and wash their hands. The pediatrician says, the child's ready then they'll go on the potty. That blanket answer just seems kind of like a cop-out. The success rate with this program is about 97%, and I've done about 600 kids in the last five years. I'm excited about meeting the doctors and hearing about what their opinion is about my method. Very good. We have the three moms in our audience who took Wendy's boot camp this week, and they are Cynthia, Diane, and Cherie. Now, Cynthia, I'm going to ask you first, did you think the boot camp worked well? I really think it did work for my child. Um, he has gone home and he slept through two nights without getting wet. And um, we're working on it. <laughs> we're doing good till now. So it's a good start. Now, yeah. Diane, was it good for your son? He is going pee and poo in the potty by himself. And Sri, why did you want to do the boot camp? I was so sick of diapers. So you can familiar, be familiar with that 30 million disposable diapers? Oh, you were contributing, he's my I third and my last, and yes, I think <laughs> I have been contributed to about 30% of that 30 million diapers. I think that's one of the things I, I really like about the program, Wendy. You, it, it's a great alternative for parents that are fed up. Sometimes you, you need to bring a third party in, and that's what you offer, right? Absolutely. Um, just to be the parental support and the family support that we don't get if it's just one-on-one -on -one with a child kind of takes out that whole power struggle there. I help the parents work through it. Exactly, and it seems that you're, you're putting a lot of responsibility on the kids. I'm putting a lot of responsibility on the kids, but nothing that I don't teach them. So the expectations are higher, but everything they need to know, I teach them myself in the class. Mm -hmm. Dr. Sears, walk me through potty training basics. Somewhere around age two, uh, they start getting aware of when they're going and when they're not and when they're holding it and you know you see the signs of them pulling on their diapers and, and you just kind of start maybe modeling you know they start watching mom or dad or brothers or sisters using the potty it just kind of happens you know that's when their muscles when I talk to the kids about uh, potty training we call them the donut muscles these are the muscles they squeeze to kind of hold things in or to push things out and uh, you know that's when they start learning how to control their donut muscles and you know most of the time it goes pretty easy I was reading about your program and I thought okay this looks pretty good, 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 and then I saw the list of foods you use. One of the big things I stand for as a pediatrician is good nutrition. I know you do too, but um, don't you think you could use a little healthier things, you know, using soda and Kool-Aid and you know, pretty... I'm a mom of six sure, small real kids. Sure, real sugary juices. And we are really big on health and diet yeah. in our house. Um, the diet that I implement during the training is for the training only mm -hmm. and the reason behind it is these aren't treats that the kids usually get so they're right. really excited. Mm -hmm. I try to make the kids think that they're in charge of their bodies and that they're in charge of what's going on. So if I put these things out there, um, I'm actually getting a return back. We're going to expedite the whole process. The salty chips draws water into the bowel and the sugary drinks don't ever really quench their thirst so I'm going to get more reaction. Yeah, and that's, that's almost one of the problems I really had with this is if you're really affecting the child's physiology that much, 
giving them diuresis so they, they pee more and they poop more. I just don't know how healthy that is. I know it's just for a day, but I, ooh, I really have a hard time with it. So we, we read about your, your yeah. techniques, and I have to say, very impressed. Oh, but yeah. with all the junk food, we have Nurse tomorrow. She's going to bring out the junk food that you use oh, in that one night for these kids. Yep. You know, so I mean, ugh. We actually analyze all this junk food in a nutritional database. This is the equivalent of 13 and a half cups of sugar. That's six pounds of sugar, okay? And, and six times the amount of sodium a child should get in a particular day. So the one thing is this, granted this is for more than one kid, mm -hmm. but that's in five hours. What I'd like to explain and what I want you to ask the parents that were at the class is how much of this stuff, which is way, a way better selection than what we had at the class, how much did their children actually consume? Because when the kids are able to help themselves, they monitor themselves. And the kids really, right away in the program, turn it over from these kind of treats to verbal praise, which is exactly what they want. So, But here's, here's the problem. You can get them to pee just as well if, if they were getting more natural juices without the high fructose corn syrup and all that. I wouldn't be making such a big deal about this if I've had kids that were great eaters, spent one night at grandma's, and, and the mom couldn't get their child to eat fruit and veggies for months. With my experience yeah. with the 600 kids that I have trained over the last five yeah. years, it hasn't been an issue. Point taken. Dis disagree with that method personally. Right, absolutely. But then I watch those little kids going around, walking around their own urine. Cleaning up their cleaning own up poop. Their own poop. I, I have to ask you, is this good? Is this bad in your opinion? Oh, because I mean, we see it's a, a little shocking of, for me to watch. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's almost one of the, the key components of a, a classic daycare situation where you try to keep all the poop away from the kids and, you know, you try to not let the messes get under their fingernails. I'd be really, I know you clean their hands. I'm sure you do. But I don't know if you could get them 100% clean. And I'd be worried about them Fecal spreading. Fecal contamination, yeah. which is a big you know, thing with a me. Big thing. So I am right on top of the kids. Um, I help them and teach them how to clean up. I know some people have said, this is pretty harsh on the kids, almost child abuse, making them clean up their own feces, you know. Um, I would say I would like you to sit in on a class. I wish you were there the other day. Yeah. I would like you to ask the parents that have gone through the class. These are people that follow up with me. And the kids call me and say, Miss Wendy, I went potty in the potty. Yeah. So, and they're very excited and, and they're empowered. So these aren't kids that hate me because I have them clean up after themselves. Seeing the kids on the videotape, they looked happy doing this. So that makes me pretty comfortable with this program, except for all that stuff. Ugh. Well, when we come back, we're going to examine another controversial potty training technique. It's sign language. Is sign language the answer to your toilet training troubles? Plus, Dr. Sears tells us what you need to know to make your potty training experience a success. That's next.